designed to be sort of a basic overview. From the other panels that I've been to, this is probably at a lower level of what we've talked about. So this might be Time Travel 101, <laughs> but hopefully that will still be advanced enough for everyone to be entertained. Today we'll ask such questions as, with what means can one time travel? What is causal paradox? We'll talk about a couple of common theories of time travel. The timelines theory and block universe theory. And we'll go through some examples and problems of these theories. And lastly, we'll end with the question, how do we reconcile paradox? Now, starting with the first question, with what means can one time travel, let's go back to one of the founding fathers of time travel, H.G. Wells, who wrote the novel, The Time Machine. So the first illustration up there is an illustration somebody made for the novel, and H.G. Wells sort of imagined the time machine almost like a bicycle. So here he is straddling it. It looks kind of junky. Then we've got the movie from the 1960. Um, it's got some colored lights on it. Tries to be kind of Victorian. And then at the bottom we've got the 2002 model, which uh, is kind of a beautiful kind of steampunk creation. And since the movie nods to Einstein, presumably it spins faster than light. But really, the most famous time machine is from 1985. <laughs> <laughs> the way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? <laughs> of course, that's a quotation from Emmett Doc Brown, the inventor of this particular time machine. This is the DeLorean from Back to the Future, of course, and if you didn't even recognize that, I'm not sure what you're doing here at this talk, <laughs> <laughs> or even at this convention. So those are a few examples of the physical means by which one can time travel. Here are some others. How to time travel. These are ordered from least to most plausible, starting with magic. <laughs> <laughs> so two movies that have used magic to carry information between the future and the past our frequency, made in the year 2000, we used a magic radio, and The Lake House, 2006, which shamelessly ripped off the frequency model with a magic mailbox. And then there was uh, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban in 2004, which had the time turner. After that we have pseudoscience. <laughs> this would include the time machine, H.G. Wells. We also have the DeLorean from Back to the Future in 1985. Uh, we also have Kate and Leopold, made in 2001. They had a rift in time whose appearance could be predicted. And in Deja Vu, 2006, there was a government program called Snow White. And also, there was Primer, 2004, which I had the pleasure of just seeing this convention. And they had some sort of machine that was too complicated for me to really understand. I should see that one again. But that, that fit under suit. And then there's a subgenre of pseudoscience called futuristic technology. So this is technology from the future, usually. So in Terminator, 1984, they have an undisclosed method of sending people back in time, but it involved them appearing naked in spheres that burned the environment around them. We had, in 1999, the Time Shifters, which used a, de a device called the RTT, which was a book-sized computer-like machine which enabled tourists from the future to visit disasters in the past. It's kind of horrifying. There was happy accidents in the year 2000, also method undisclosed, which allowed people from the future to enter the past. And in Minority Report 2002, information was sent from the future to the past by the psychic minds of the precogs, precognitive people who could see what would happen. And lastly, we have actual science. But there's very few examples of this, because physically it requires a black hole to travel to the past. So most stories ignore science entirely in the interest of telling a story that is not about astronauts. No matter how you travel through time, you must consider the possible paradoxes you might produce. Questions of causality plague most travel into the past. Now, travel into the future doesn't create any paradoxes. You would disappear from your present and appear in the future. And as far as anyone else was concerned, it would be like you moved to Boston for a while and then came back. But you'd, you'd be younger than if you hadn't, like if you'd lived time sequentially. 
there's a gap in the timeline where people pass and you skip, so they aged and you did not. But since you're living through time sequentially, the relationship between cause and effect remains intact. Some of you might be wondering then, <coughs> what does a causal paradox look like? I have an example. <laughs> so, in Back to the Future, Marty McFly travels 30 years into the past and takes his father's place in his mother's affections. This is disturbing, yet hilarious. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 